page 493. <coughs> yeah, I'm going to put them on. You want this? Yeah, I'm going to put them on tonight. Yeah. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my foe. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I'm going to serve him till I die. Oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I was so lonely night. I was a sinner too soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another. And having been gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, 
for the prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith for ministry let us wait on our ministry for he that teacheth on teaching for he that exhorteth on exhortation and he that giveth let him do it with simplicity he that rules with diligence and he that shows mercy with truth let love be without dissimulation abhor that which is evil cleave to that which is good be kindly affectionate one to another brotherly love in honor preferring one another not slothful in business fervent in spirit serving the lord rejoicing in hope patience in tribulation continuing instance in prayer and distributing to the necessity of saints giving to hospitality bless them which persecute you bless and curse not rejoice them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep be of the same mind one toward another mind not high things but condescend men of low state but be not wise in your own conceit recompense to no man evil for evil provide things honest in the sight of all men and if it be possible as much as lieth in you live peacefully with all men dearly beloved Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. We read from the book of uh, Romans 12, chapter 1 through the 21st verse. May the Lord have a birth. Resting upon his great word. Do you know another song? Pastor, do you want another song? No, I didn't. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Number 150. Thank you, Deacon Miller, for starting this uh, call to worship. Uh, this is the last night. We want to thank each and every one of you for uh, participating and uh, being a study of God's word this week. Uh, I'm truly blessed to be in uh, the service tonight, and I'm sure you've learned something all week. If you've learned something all week, just wave your hand up, let you know that you learned something. I'm sure we can learn something each and every day about God's Word. Uh, tonight we're going to have our offering tonight, or last night, we're just going to do an offering tonight for a service as we pass the basket around. have some books left, uh, five minute apologetics for today, you still need a book. We will be doing this in the fall also, and also we'll be doing this book uh, during our association in June, and some other topics that are going on in culture. What was that? You do the cash app or offering? Call me Pastor Scott. <laughs> I got cash opportune time to be among the saints of God and dear Lord we're asking that you continue to watch over each and every one of us as uh, we study your word dear Lord and asking over this offering dear Father that is taken up that will be rightly divided to your word dear Lord we thank you for the gift and we thank you for the giver mm -hmm. asking all things in Jesus name we do pray amen, amen. amen.
about being able to share the evening and teach. It is important that we study God's Word. Now so more than ever, we need to be studiers and uh, believers of God's Word. These last and evil times that we live in. Amen. Can everybody hear me this evening? sitting somewhere. I don't know where I left the sitting. Maybe it's just it. It is. Never mind. So, maybe. It's like my writing. But again, I don't know. All right. We are taking off tonight on pages. Yeah, this is me. Day 302. And we're going to attempt. <laughs> to make it to around day 315. So I'm going to start this off by simply telling you this is an overview. Overview. Amen. There's no possible way within an hour and 15 minutes or so that I could do any justice, but I, I we did feel... Uh, Reverend Griffin and myself, that it would be good that we have a, a review and a knowledge of what is to come that is, that is vitally important. Amen? So we're going to begin at page 302, and you obviously can read through these. If you haven't already read uh, through this this evening, you can read and, and go back over it with your notes and see... Uh, how things match up. Amen. So, let's go to God in prayer first and then we'll get to our lesson. Father, we thank you again this evening. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for another day's journey. You have brought us a mighty long way. And we praise you because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We praise you because there is no other God but you. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you as we open your word tonight. Help us, Master, to uh, see the truth of your word in all things and understand where we are and, and what you are doing in these last days that we may at least know ourselves and admonish others who maybe don't know you. Lord, strengthen now and bless the ears of the hearer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So again, this is a brief synopsis you can get into your book, again, on page 302, and uh, look over more in depth uh, at your own leisure as your own study time. First thing I want to say is, is eschatology simply means the study of future events. So, you know, I had this week going into spring break. This was my spring break uh, from school. And I got there, sat down at the beginning. Well, last Saturday, Sunday, I sat down and I uh, planned out what I thought I could get done this week and, and blocked off a week of time. And I'll tell you, some of those things got crossed off, <laughs> and many of them did not. Uh, but I'll tell you this, and this is good news tonight, God's got a calendar, and he is right on schedule. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's got a calendar, a divine, heavenly calendar, and he is literally checking things off as things move. For us here on planet Earth, I, I wrote this down in my notes, uh, and it, it says this, can't you feel something different in the atmosphere? Can you? Something spiritual, spiritually changing and, and different every day 
in the atmosphere. If you can't, then just simply, as I said last night, look at the news. Just a few things from the news. Hole. There's a hole in the sun, scientists have found in the last few months, 20 times the size of the earth. Sun has a hole in it. All right? Recently, large boats out of control hitting bridges. Whether that was something that was an accident, I haven't really followed it closely, but that happened in the news. Obviously, the normal wars and rumors of wars. This one always gets me. Earthquakes, at least 50 on average in the United States daily. Small tremors, some larger. 1,400 a day in the world in an average of 500,000 each year. The earth shakes. Pandemics that we have come through. Pestilence, they tell me it's not going to be locusts, but cicadas, am I right, here in the next few weeks? And it's going to match up, I think, every 13 years and 17 years. And this year, they all matching up. So here's what they're saying. Billions of cicadas are going to swarm over a section or portion of the United States. Set to emerge. In the, the Eastern world, locusts uh, come often. Africa is overcome with swarms of locusts. Lawlessness. I hate to even say this, but a mother goes on vacation 10 days and leaves a toddler in the house by themselves. What have we come to? Amen. Gender confusion. All sorts of debauchery and sin and, and sex trafficking is at an all-time high. Is this what the Apostle Paul spoke of? Anybody? Is this the times the Apostle Paul spoke of? Yes. Part of the biblical worldview is that the Christian understands what is going to happen in the future. How do we view end times? Do we view it just like getting on a roller coaster, strapping in and just say, well, we're, wherever it's going, let's just go. Or do we have some mind of what is going to happen? You know, with that analogy, there, there, there was a, a while ago, my, my son, when he was just, he was maybe fourth grade, fifth grade, we went to Cedar Point. Minister Reverend Griffin was with us because he, he had Kiera or, or Lene. He was holding on them. We got on a coaster. That thing went 200 feet up in the air. All right, wasn't high as Deacon Scott in the air, but it went 200 feet up in the air. And my son kept saying to me, he said it this way, are we at the top yet? And I looked out and I said, no, not quite. And we were a long way up and that thing was just lilting up there. I, I was a little bit more confident because I had ridden it many times, but he had not. He had not. You know what, believers, that's kind of the same way with us. When we are aware of God's word and we know where things are heading, the little twists and turns shouldn't bother us. Amen. Amen. The little twists and turns that, that happen and the drops all of a sudden should not bother us. Many today, including myself sometimes, we do not understand eschatology and some will just simply try to avoid it like the plague. You, you, in case you don't, you, in case you don't believe that, then, then roll up and say, well, we're going to have a lesson today from the book of Revelation. People's eyes, you know, get, get different and, 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 it, and it's kind of a scary thing for some. But I read what this, this one person said, Revelation should be a, a, a point of joy for the Christian. The book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ as given by John should be a point of joy rejoicing for the Christian. Many people will say, you know what, in terms of eschatology, they, they're kind of like the song, I don't worry about tomorrow, I just live from day to day. But you know, I, I get it, Jesus said, uh, who can add anything to their stature by worrying about tomorrow? He didn't say, he said, don't worry or be anxious about tomorrow, but he did not say, be ignorant of the future. Amen. So, 
He warns us through Paul's letters often, multiple times, the Apostle Paul writes to the churches, and what does he say? He says, he says uh, or says, be vigilant and be sober. Amen. So a statement that I wrote down a while back, I heard a guy say it on a podcast or on a uh, uh, casting of some sort that I was listening to. I've never been able to find it again, but I did remember this part. He said it this way, Israel is God's timepiece. Israel, if you were uh, considering a clock, Israel is the hour hand. Jerusalem is the minute hand. And Temple Mount is the second hand. Pretty interesting. Israel is the hour hand. Jerusalem is the minute hand. And Temple Mount is the second hand. Amen? So, in order to understand the events of the future, we also have to look back. So there are some books that we don't want to overlook. We won't get into them tonight, but there are some books we cannot afford to overlook. The book of Daniel is just as important as the book of Revelation in understanding end time events. Zechariah has a lot to say. In fact, every almost every Old Testament prophet and every single minor prophet speaks of the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. So Daniel and Zechariah included with Revelation. All right. Another word that I wrote down, you need to write down as well. And when we talk about history, many people don't understand their history. I, I want to pause tonight and not just because these people are here, but various ones over the years we've had history programs. It is important to understand you cannot know where you're going if you do not know where you have been. So the, the consistent and diabolical attack on history has been on purpose. People, the, 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 the prophets of old told us exactly what was going to happen. So the word that I want you to write down again, here another one, is just very simple, is ripples. Ripples. Y'all have been to a pond before, and you've thrown a rock out into the middle of the pond, and what happens when that rock hits the surface of the water? Ripples. So here's one of my favorite words to describe eschatology is ripples, and we are seeing the ripples of things that are to come. We're already experiencing them. So the very first one, and we, we'll try to go according to what your book said, and I tried to get these in order, and if some of them are out of order, charge it to my uh, head, not my heart. I wanted to do this justice tonight, and I'll just plain out, flat out tell you, some of this stuff is very difficult to, to grasp a hold of. So we, that's why we said overview, all right? Overview. Thankful for Reverend Armstrong here tonight, amen. So the very first thing. Uh, letter A on your handout, and I hope our letters will match up because I did make some changes on mine. But letter A, if it doesn't, just correct me. The rapture. The rapture. Thank you. The rapture. That is the very next thing on God's calendar. Yes. There's nothing else left. You know, folks want to say, well, that this has to happen, and, and that has to happen, and, and this over here has to happen. I want you to know tonight, there is nothing left other than what God is choosing to do on, on his big calendar except the rapture. It is, the best word to say it is, it is imminent. Yes, Amen? Amen. Amen? It could happen in the next five minutes. I've often thought about that. Uh, even sometimes Reverend Armstrong as, as, and, and Reverend uh, Griffin as you're preaching, what if it happened right now? What would, what would people do? It is, it is, you've seen those videos. The folks that did not go, they dropped to their knees and, and were screaming and crying. Papers and books floating to the floor. Clothes fell to the floor. The rapture is imminent. It could happen at any moment. Let, let's talk about the rapture for just a a few minutes. Turn to 1 Thessalonians 4. 
verse 17. If you're familiar with the rapture, say amen. amen. Everybody in church, born again believers in here should have said amen. If you're leaving when the rapture comes, say amen. 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 All right, now we got it. 417. Now, this is in a section of verses 13 through 18, but we'll just grab the 17th verse. And it says, um, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. That term caught up, yeah. harpazo, means uh, like a, a bird, a raptor bird snatches its prey off of the ground. So we will be snatched away. And scripture says also in 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 8, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53, that you won't have time to get ready for it. You have to be ready for it before it happens. Amen. Amen. I had a friend one time that he, he was a musician and he would play with us every so often. He said, trying to catch up with what y'all are doing musically is like me standing there watching a train going 60 miles an hour and trying to jump into the open spot of a car as it's going by. He said, it's not possible. It's, it's almost impossible. Well, that's a pitiful analogy. We'll be moving way more faster than that. You won't have time to get ready. It, it, tonight, those who are uh, loved ones that maybe you know are not saved, they won't have time to fall on their knees and say, hold on, wait a minute. It will happen, and then it will be over. Yes, sir. Look, at, look at your notes here tonight. First of all, it says the trump of God shall sound. The voice of the archangel, verse 16, and with the trump of God. And then the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's let, or number two. That's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53. Then we which remain shall be changed. Those who are still walking around on the earth, still alive, but are born again believers, they will not prevent or precede those who have died in the Lord. So the dead in Christ, always marvel at the wall over here of the saints that have gone on. All of those saints and all the saints that we known and have known they will not they will they will go ahead of us if we're still living then we will have, we will go up after them and then the bible says look at it and we will meet the lord verse 17 in the air this is a wonderful part so shall we ever be with the lord mm -hmm. verse 18 let's grab that one too wherefore comfort one another with these words praise the lord so, all of this is going to happen as fast. Y'all see the number on, on, on number five? Y'all see that big number there? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I can't prove this. There's no numbers in the Bible, but it did say this. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. What does that mean? How fast does light bounce off of your eye? Well, I don't really know that, but I do know this. That light travels at 186,000 miles per second, meaning it can make it all the way around the equator of the earth eight times in one snap. Mm -hmm. We're going to leave up out of here in the back of an eye. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, and then so shall we ever be with the Lord. He's going to snatch us off the planet through the atmosphere, yes, sir. through the outer atmosphere, into the exosphere, which is space. And then wherever he is, we're going to be. Amen. All right. Now, don't ask me scientifically to explain that. All I can tell you is this. With my little simple mind, it's going to be fast. Yes. It's going to be abrupt. And it's only going to be for those who are ready. Amen. 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 Now, real fast, let's take a quick detour. There are people around that have three different positions on when the rapture occurs. There are people who believe in the pre-tribulation, which means they believe 
the rapture will happen prior to the seven year great tribulation period. There are some believing that it happens halfway in between at three and a half years Halfway in is going to happen there. And some people that are called post-trib or post-tribulation, uh, folks who believe that, have, they believe that it happens at the end of the tribulation. Myself, I believe we are pre-tribulation. I believe that it's going to happen prior. And there are several reasons I believe this is because when the great tribulation is mentioned in the Bible and all the things that happen, the church is not really mentioned anymore after uh, a, a certain chapter in the book of Revelation. Amen? Now, that's my belief. I like what one person said in this book, and I'll talk about this book a little bit later, but Things to Come by Dwight Pentecost. He said, thousands of years from now, when we're in heaven with the Lord, it won't matter. When it, whether it was pre, mid, or, or post, all that will matter is that you went when it happened. Amen. That's a great point. Amen. I will also say this, and then let's move on. This rapture will cause great calamity and stress on the planet. It's going to be catastrophic. Now, we won't go into this, but I opened up a sermon one time with this. People on flights will disappear. People in cars that are moving on buses and trains and cruises will disappear. People in malls, people sleep in the bed. Y'all heard the song that the choirs would have been singing. I pray we'll all be ready. People in the mall, people at Disney, people at school, all of a sudden, all at once, all these people will, will, will be missing. You talk about Amber Alerts. It's going to be mass chaos. I hope you know they are already planning on how they're going to explain it. <laughs> how do y'all know they're already planning on how they're going to explain it? Y'all, y'all seen all this this uptake in UFO talk? Yeah. <laughs> Have you noticed that? Have you noticed all the the at the people coming out and say yes, I've seen them. They're going to say somebody was abducted. Something happened. But there's going to be some people that, that listen and will be left behind and will say, no, we missed the rapture. Mm -hmm. It happened, and we missed it. Yeah. Millions missing, massive calamity, and, and that will, I believe, usher in what the Bible calls a period of time called the day of the Lord. Not just one day, but a period of time in which God deals, starts dealing with Israel and, and deals with the rest of the earth. Have you heard it said this way that right now during the church age that Israel is kind of on the back burner with God? But don't be mistaken, Israel is still the apple of God's eyes. They are his chosen people. He's not finished with them yet. So this rapture ushers in letter B, the day of the Lord. You ever heard of it? Raise your hand. The, the day of the Lord. Turn to Joel 1.15. Any questions on the rapture? Nothing really there that I don't believe we haven't heard. Any questions? Joel 1.15. Somebody read that, please. Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Amen. So there it is, day of the Lord. Amos 5.16. Anybody? Somebody read that? Amos 5.16. Somebody go ahead and grab Obadiah 115. Pastor, you asked us to find all these hard to find books. Well, don't use your the table of contents. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, the Lord, the God of hosts, yes. the Lord saith thus, dwelling shall be in all So that speaks of the day of the Lord. Uh, Obadiah 115, anybody? It reads, For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen as thou hast done. It shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return 
upon thine own head. Zephaniah 1 7. Anybody? Zephaniah 1 7. Hold my peace at the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. For the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord has prepared a sacrifice, He hath bid His guests. Amen. Amen. There are many other references, tons of others. The New Testament mentions the day of the Lord multiple times. So, the rapture happens, and then immediately, if you want to include the rapture, or immediately after the rapture, literally the second after the rapture is over, that is considered the day of the Lord. And that whole time, in fact, the rest of what we're kind of going over, that whole time is considered the day of the Lord, the period of time that God will deal with the rest of the world. So let's talk about something right now that is in the news and is controversial. Go to letter C, and it's not controversial on our part controversy in the news and what they say. I want you to know Israel belongs to the Jews. Doesn't matter what this group of folks say, what this person said, who who uh, riots or, or protests over here. God gave Israel the land. It is theirs. It's always been theirs. He gave it to them and even when they were going in to claim it, he said, it is your course. Yes. Amen? So, I want you to know, and I didn't have a, 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 a way to get it on this, this sheet here, but if you look it up, Google it, the, the, the parameters or the amount of land that God gave them compared to what they have now, mm -hmm. it's an amazing difference. Yes. It's an amazing difference. The size of Israel now is about, the, if I'm correct, the size of the state of New Jersey. It's just a little tiny country. And they are arguing, wanting to take more of the land. I want you to know the people that are arguing with them, they will not be happy until they take every single inch of soil. But it's not going to happen. Because God's in control. Go to Genesis 15, 18. Genesis 15, 18. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, uh -huh. saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river of Euphrates. That's a big, big difference. Now, whether you literally, somebody said that they meant, thought that meant Wadi, which is the little dried up river there in Egypt, that make a difference. Or the actual Nile, it's in Egypt. All the way, Euphrates is where? In Iran? Close to there? Somewhere in there? It's over in that particular Syria, in that area. That's way more land than what they have now. Who said that, by the way, Sister uh, Cosby? Who's speaking in verse 18? God. So if God said it, Back, back it up. What was last night's lesson? Have a biblical worldview. All the people arguing, that's not their land. That's not their land. First of all, they don't understand history. There has never been one time when that land has been uh, taken away from them in such a way where God said, well, this is not your land. Even when they were exiles, this promise still stood true. Amen. Amen. Uh, go to 17. 8. Amen. I, I said this at our church, and it, it, this was convicting to me. The maps are in your Bible for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes overlook the maps in the Bible. The maps are in your Bible for use them. Because they are actually a part. You have to understand where these things are. You know, when it talks about Jesus moved from village to village and went from here to there, I sometimes go back and look in the back at the maps. They're there for a reason. And for this specific purpose, we have to understand there's way more land that belongs to these uh, people than, than what a man has given them. 
So look on your handout, it says, man, governments try to set their own boundaries and occupy the land, but God said what he said. Amen. Don't miss this, 1948. This, again, is the history part. 1948. Was anybody in here living in 1948? We got one person, two people. All right, praise the Lord. So you kind of maybe briefly or have a little bit of knowledge, remember that that was the year and what, what happened? Uh, Israel, Reverend Arthur. Israel was nationalized. They became a nation. They became a nation, and they were given that land. That was shortly after World War II. Understand the history, and even in occupation, they split it up mm -hmm. in several different ways. This is very key in eschatology. Now, that being said, go to letter D. Over, if, as you look and read and study this, you will see there will be an invasion of Israel. Yes. Nations will come in. I want you to know real fast, I'm going to jump ahead. This thing that happened in Ukraine is not by accident. Ukraine creates a pathway to Israel. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm looking at my map just right, we were in history class a few months ago and was looking at this uh, because there was something in the news. There, after Ukraine, there's nothing else but Turkey left. Right. Then you're right there at Israel. So there has to be a path for that northern nation. So Ezekiel, and this is in your apologetics book, Verses uh, 1 through 6 of the 38th chapter, he literally, by the power of the Holy Spirit, yeah. looking ahead, lists the nations involved yeah. in the invasion of Israel. Look at the list down here. Sound familiar? You hear them in the news? Russia, yes, Syria, mm -hmm. Turkey, Libya, Iran, and other few, uh, other to name a few. They are all going to surround and, uh, and invade Israel. Why? Because Satan hates God's people. Yes. Now, these, this invasion as to when it is setting up, it will happen, I believe, at some point during the tribulation, yes. which is the next line. So let's talk about the seven years. So one point that we have to be, be mindful of is we are in tribulation now. We are experiencing tribulation. We're experiencing hostilities. But we are not experiencing the great tribulation. All right? Um, it begins, again, with the exit of the church from off the earth. God will then completely shift his attention and he will deal with Israel mm -hmm. and with the rest of the earth through judgment. So if you've heard of some of these things, and when we got to Revelation, this is where I was like, Lord, you're going to have to... Help me big time. They start talking about seals mm -hmm. and trumpets mm -hmm. and bowls. Anybody ever been confused by some of all those things? Well, here's what's going to happen. Seals are going to be opened, and they were opened, I believe, in heaven. Trumpets are going to be blown, and vials or bowls are going to be poured out. All you need to know is those words equal judgment. Those words equal judgment. So here are the judgments. And if you turn to the book of Revelation, you can kind of follow along. And there were some preachers years ago when they started preaching on these, the church got real quiet. About like y'all are now. <laughs> church got real quiet. You talking about stuff crawling up out of the ground and 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 you know, you know, little kids, Sister Armstrong, we sitting back here, our eyes were Real big, you know, we was half scared anyway about everything. But but here it is, watch this. The seal judgments start off simply after the rapture, the Antichrist will enter or come onto the scene. Mm -hmm. And the first thing he's going to bring is really the first thing. He's going to offer peace. Yes, sir. Now, can I ask you a simple question? Go back to September 11th, 2001, and remember when the trade towers of uh, trade centers were attacked mm -hmm. the country was on edge what was the one thing that everybody wanted to get back to security mm -hmm. simple uh, peace yes. is this over with can i get back to routine the antichrist will step onto the scene after millions of people go missing and he will offer peace he will bring security 
He will offer a, a, a security blanket, so to speak. And people will gravitate towards him because he will be a solidified and unifying character on the world stage. That's what folks want. Folks love a celebrity. Huh? All those of you who watched American Idol years ago, they love celebrity. He will be a celebrity. Then the second seal that is open will show the Antichrist's true nature. Now, the seals are actually starting in chapter 6, sorry, of Revelation. So if you read your Bible like I see mine, it says, second seal, open war. So three and a half years in, after supposed peace, the Antichrist is going to turn tail and he's going to declare war on God's people. All right? Seal number three, famine. What word am I thinking in my, in my head? Ripples. We've already seen it. We've already seen it, but this is going to be a great famine. People won't be able to get food. Boy, that sounds ripples. <laughs> Groceries, sky high. Hello, somebody. Seal number four, death. Seal number five, martyrs. Many will die for resisting the Antichrist. If you don't take the mark of the beast, you will be murdered. It's already in play. It's already here. When you stick your hand on something and they scan you or you can walk into a store now, and they I saw this on news three years ago, and, and they said you can walk into the store and it will scan your phone on you you pick up the items you want, walk out of the store, and it scans you on the way out, adds them into a digital card somewhere, and if money comes off your account, you didn't have to beat, didn't have to hand out cash, didn't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Guess what? You don't take that mark, you will be in opposition to the Antichrist. Seal number six, mm -hmm. geological and celestial disturbances. This is the one that got me uh, got my attention when I was younger. The earth is going to quake quite different than it's quaking now. The, the heavens will go crazy. You think about asteroids and stars and things will start acting not in normal capacity. And then seal number seven, there is a great silence in heaven which cues or brings about the trumpet judgment. Y'all with me still? Everybody still with me? If you're with me, say amen. Amen. Then in, in chapter 8, uh, the trumpet judgment. So these, this is what's going to happen. Uh, trumpet number one. A third of the vegetation on earth will be burned with fire. Mm -hmm. Now how it's going to happen, you can look that up. Uh, trumpet number two. A third of the sea will be destroyed. I, I was thinking about this as late as today. I love to go to the beach and I love to look out at the at the water and look at the ocean. But it also in the back of my mind, I, I say, God, you created this as beautiful. And then I say, but well, one day it's going to be destroyed. A third of the sea will be destroyed. A third of the fresh water will be destroyed. God is going to judge the earth with intense judgment. Can I pause right here and ask? Everybody that may listen, why would you want to be left for this? <laughs> Third of the stars, number four, will be darkened. So it'll be darker at night. Something's going to happen. The stars are going to fall out of their sockets. They're going to go black. I don't know. You might want to pay attention to seal number five. Increase demonic activity. Do you understand why? If the church is not in the picture, there's nobody here left to pray for what's happening. Amen? Amen. The, the devil will have full reign of what, of what God allows him to do. So if you think things are bad now, mm -hmm. it will be way worse. Increased demonic activity. Uh, trumpet number six. One third of the human population will be killed or destroyed. That is where that, that shows these things that look like men, or locusts, men, uh, and, they, and, and the Bible says they stung people. I remember teaching this, 
And it says that, that funeral homes at one point will be empty, hospitals will be full. People will want to die, but can't. But here in this particular instance, people will be destroyed. Trumpet number seven, announcement of the bowls or the vile judgments. God is literally going to pour out judgment like he has never poured before. I think this is the one I was meaning here. Number one, malignant sores on those who took the mark of the beast. They will be stung. Sea turns to blood. Now, third of it was destroyed. Now it turns to blood. Fresh waters turn to blood. So you won't be able to find anything to drink. No recreation. Amen? Men scorched with fire. Darkness over the kingdom of the beast. The kingdom that he has set up. The ten European nations, all of that revived Roman Empire, that will happen. All that that's happening in Europe, it is falling into place. Then there will be an invasion from the east. And number seven, can you get this? An earthquake like it's never been before. The earth will shake like never before. I'm going to ask you one more time. Somebody needs to tell their loved ones this tonight. Why would you want to be here? When all of this goes down. Anybody here glad tonight? Don't get quiet. You glad? You're going to be snatched up out of here? Amen. Questions or comments? I'm hurrying on. I said it was an overview. I hope I'm trying to make this as plain as, as possible. But keep in mind, the tribulation is simply about God pouring out his judgment on the earth. God, and you know what? It's no coinky dink today that that uh, the, the, the world wants to present God as a God of love only. But the Bible says in Romans, I believe, around the 13th chapter, 10th chapter, around there somewhere, that he is a God that is also a severe God. Amen. He's a God of wrath. We see this plain and out in the open in the tribulation. Uh, all right, really fast. Questions? Yes, sir. Back to your opening statement about uh, pre-trib. Yes, sir. Post-trib. That's mm -hmm. why I believe pre-trib. Because, see, this is judgment. All this is judgment. And see, we were judged. At yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise, Praise God. Amen. If you didn't hear him online, he said, one reason we believe in the pre-trib is, is for this reason, it is that uh, God judged our sin at Calvary. We will not be here for this Amen. judgment uh, during the tribulation. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Can I add to that? Uh, yes, sir. It said that rock was Christ. Yes. Moses, when he hit the rock the second time, mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not what the church is. You know, because we're, we're the body of Christ. Yes. Yeah. 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 That goes right along. Yep. I agree. I agree. Uh, letter F. Now, this is where things... When I tried to go through this before, got a little bit fuzzy. This is why I said Daniel was very important. But here's what you need to know. There's a diagram on your paper. And if you look here, we are in the part that says gap. Y'all see that? Yes. What is the gap? It is the church, church age. Jesus. The moment the rapture happens, the church age is what? Over. Over. And then in this particular lineup, uh, uh, 70 weeks, a week equals a period of years. Mm -hmm. All right, 70 years, so to speak. So you divide 70 of those numbers, you kind of get how that works, which means Daniel's 70th week would be a period of seven years, which will be consistent with the tribulation. Yes. All right? So God is, and all you need to know with that is God's lining stuff up. Amen. And his calendar is, is right, and his calendar is on on schedule. Amen? Amen? So God deals with Israel. Go to Malachi. It's not a book that a lot of people use a lot, unless they're reading that scripture about will a man rob God. <laughs> but, but go to Malachi, the fourth chapter. Malachi has something to say. He says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children uh, to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. So God is saying, 
I will send you help. I will send you the message. I will send you uh, salvation before the terrible day of the Lord. Amen. Let, let's keep moving on. Letter G. So what should this all up to this point do for us? Uh, the first thing I thought of, and you can circle the word, it should focus us. You know, help me, help me, Holy Ghost. We don't have time to fool around. All right? We don't have time to play and play church and entertain. If we know these things are coming, then it is, we're in the two-minute warning, I believe, right now. You know, in the two-minute warning, teams show an urgency. Everything speeds up. Can I ask you really fast, is stuff speeding up? Yes, sir. Can you tell that? The school year, I, 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 I base it on the school year. I walk up the steps to my room, and the trees that are there, every when I start school, they're green. And then in the fall, you see the leaves fall, and then they're bare in the winter. Then you see the little buds, and you know the years. This year has gone Last year went. The whole decade went. Somebody said, well, didn't this happen just a couple years? They said, no, that was eight years ago. <laughs> Time is winding up. This should focus us. I'm going to ask you these questions and, 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 and just let them settle. Do you know someone that you believe is not ready for these things? Or somebody that has passed that you believe, uh, that you, you know or think maybe they did not know the Lord before they passed. Mm -hmm. That being said, with this knowledge, time is ticking. And assignments come daily. It is bigger than you. Mm -hmm. God has somebody for you to talk to tomorrow. Hallelujah. God has somebody for you to minister to tomorrow. Tomorrow might be somebody's last time to hear from the Lord or hear your testimony. We don't have time to play church. Could it be we've made church into what it's not supposed to be? I'm going to stick to the handout, but I, I just, the Lord, it, it, this, is, this is in my spirit. We have done so much so long that sometimes we've lost the landmark, and the Lord is saying, behold, I come quickly, and we still play around. Uh, the Wyandans said it years ago, and you think, you think you have time to laugh and play? Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. You better serve the Lord today. Amen. So, here's why. Look at this. And then we'll wrap this up. Look at this. The Antichrist. Letter H. He steps onto the scene when? At the tribulation. The front end of the tribulation. Just after the rapture. Go to 2 Thessalonians 2.7. Any questions up to this point? I know y'all are thinking. Amen. No questions? What's an all millennials? A who? All millennials. Where's that at? Uh, that ain't on my handout. Uh, all all, 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 all means no, and they don't believe in a millennial. Okay, yeah. A millennials? A millennials? Yeah. Now, yeah, I thought you said omni or om. Okay. Yeah. They don't believe. It's a whole other group because all the three groups you mentioned, are still pre-millennial. Yes. They still believe in the millennial reign. All three of those groups. Then yeah. there's a group that don't believe. And, and it's almost kind of partial creditors, which you may, you know, not look a whole lot into that. But mm -hmm. they are already filled with Nero and all the you know. Well, that, that, yeah, that was the history part goes about. We did talk about that. Yes. We don't want to get this as old. Right, right. Yeah. 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 Don't go down that rabbit hole. <clears throat> All right, everybody got 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verse 7. Somebody read that. For the mystery of iniquity, you have already worked. Only he who now liveth will let until he be taken out of the way. 
Now, many believe that this is the church or the church indwelled by the Holy Spirit until the church is taken out of the way. And then as the Bible calls him, the man of sin be revealed. Now, if you had to ask me, is he already on planet Earth? Just me, myself? I think so. But now, I don't know. I, I, that's just my opinion. Now, the question is not whether is he on Earth yet, but what happens once he gets here. We need to be mindful of that. Look at this. Don't be fooled. A characteristic number one. Charismatic, unifying, inviting, but then three and a half years in, he turns what? Destructive. People will see that he is completely empowered by Satan. He is a part of the unholy trinity, which would include Satan, the dragon, the beast, the false prophet, and then the man of sin, the antichrist. He is mentioned in Daniel, the seventh chapter, verse 24 through 27. Read that on your own later, but go to Matthew 24, 24. Jesus' discourse mm -hmm. concerning the end times. His disciples came to him, and what did, what did they ask him? Tell us what? What is the sign of your coming? When shall these things be? Yep. Um, verse 3, 24 3. Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the age, or the end of the world. Now, one of these is, turn on over to verse 24, for there shall arise false Christ. Just this past week in the news, over in Africa, Ghana, I believe. There's a man that is over there healing folks, performing miracles, said he opened up blinded eyes, and says he's Jesus Christ. Verse 24, hello, ripples, false prophets shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. That's nothing new. I remember kind of sitting a little bit, you know, kind of a little bit terrified hearing the older folks in the church talk about Jim Jones years ago at the end of the 70s. And he got all those folks to follow him down into uh, South America. And he got all those folks to drink the Kool-Aid. Y'all think that's just a catchphrase, but that actually happened. And then they went down there and hundreds of people died. And he said he was Jesus. The man out there in Waco, Texas said he was Christ. The other man years ago over in Colorado had people pack their bags. Said they were getting ready to go up. They had bags packed. All right? So people who have foreshadowed the Antichrist have been on the scene for a long time. Go to 1 John 2.18. 1 John 2, 18 through 22. Can someone read that? Little children, mm -hmm. it is the last time, and as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, mm -hmm. but they were not of us. Mm -hmm. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest that they were not of us, not all of us. But you have an unction from the Holy One. Yes. And you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Mm -hmm. Who is a liar? But he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. Praise God. He is Antichrist yes. that denies the Father and the Son. So you won't be able to tell false doctrine right off the bat. Oh, yeah. Who is Jesus? Mm -hmm. Is he the Son of God? That is one of the, the bottom line things that, that they will try to deviate away from. And the Antichrist will try to deny that Jesus is who he He will exalt himself. 
He will go and commit the abomination of desolation in the temple and exalt himself. Now, I'm not going to get into all that tonight, but you all know if you've been watching the news that they say Israel can build that temple at any moment. We've got such a thing today called 3D printing. Anybody ever heard of that? They can build a house with 3D printing like that. It's no longer waiting six, seven, eight, nine, ten months to get stuff built. You can build it just like that. So for us to say, well, they can't do anything until the temple's built. They can't do anything. And we got time for this. You don't have as long as you think. It is imminent. Yes. All right. One big question that your book pointed out. Will the Antichrist be Muslim? Well, I'm not into knowing that. I, I really don't know, but I do know this. I believe Islam will play a big role, seeing that all of the nations around Israel are Islamic nations. All right? The Antichrist will set up one world religion. Now, that is the interesting part, how he will weave all of those folks together. But something will unite them. All right, whether it be the catastrophe that they will be left with after the rapture or just simply some charismatic, uh, magnet, magnetizing way that he grabs their attention. All right. After this happens, there will be Armageddon and the, the, uh, the armies of the earth will surround Israel. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, Antichrist will turn. And the armies of the earth will surround Israel. They will gather. Now, I have a question kind of in there. You can underline if you want. I've often wondered this. Where's U.S.? Where's us at? We ain't in it. Y'all ever notice that? We're not in end time eschatology per se. So that opens up another. Go ahead, brother. I know what you're not, not by image. Mm -mm. Like a bear. Nope. Nor by name. No. Not there. So what happens to us? I don't know. I know where we're going. <laughs> but the folks left behind in what we call now the United States, what will happen? I, I don't know. But this great war, Armageddon, y'all heard of the term Armageddon? Mm -hmm. They will gather, and someone once said that valley, that that flat plain over there is the Valley of Megiddo, if I'm not mistaken, is the most natural battlefield on the face of the planet. God knew that when he designed the earth. Amen. And that's where they will gather. Now, here's where a lot of people get tripped up. They think the rapture is the second coming of Christ. What distinguishes the rapture between the second coming of Christ? Anybody? Really fast. The second coming, he actually comes to earth. Yes. The rapture, he does. Amen. Amen. So catch this. The rapture, he is in the air, but the second coming, the Bible says that there's a scripture underlined it. He will touch down on the Mount Olives. Now, we, we were over across the river a few months ago and heard a guy preach about this. And I'll tell you what. That young man did a wonderful job that night preaching. And here's what he said. He said the first time Jesus came into Jerusalem, he came in as a, as a, a, a lamb slain before the foundations of the earth. He came in on, on a donkey. He came in offering peace through salvation. Amen. The next time he comes in, he's going to literally touch the earth. And the earth is going to split. And it's not going to split geographically the right way. It's going to split by supernatural power. And then get this. He pointed out, and I looked it up. He was right, this pastor that preached that. He said the Muslims knew of this of this. Uh, a, a prophecy. So they put a graveyard between the gate where he will come in and they sealed up the gate. Yes. The eastern gate, the golden gate yes. is sealed up. Look it up online if you want to. And a graveyard, a Muslim graveyard is in between the entrance and the gate. Mm -hmm. Because they know the Jews believe that they can't go through dead things. But little do they know the Savior is king. He is ruler over everything. Amen. He can march straight through Amen. death. Amen. 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 Now, somebody said, and that, that's why it says in Psalms 24, lift up your heads, O ye gates, yes. and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory, what? Shall. Shall. Wow. Who is? Who is? 
this king of glory. Come on, y'all. He is the Lord, what? Strong and mighty. The Lord, what? Mighty in. So no bricks, no rocks are going to stop him. He will set up his kingdom on earth. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Praise God. Amen. That takes us on to K. A thousand years of peace under Christ's rule. He will set up his millennial kingdom. Even then, at the end of that, Satan will deceive some folks. Why? Because that's his job. And he's good at it. And at the end of that, Satan will be thrown into or cast into the lake of fire. That's found in Revelation 20, verses 7 through 10. Now, this is not on your handout, but write it down. What is the great white throne judgment? Mm -hmm. Go to Revelation 20. The great white throne judgment. What is it? Give me just a few more minutes and we're finished and we'll take any questions. Revelation 20, verse 11. And it reads, And I saw a what? Great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books, catch that, were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and, the, and death and hell were delivered up uh, the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now, this great white throne judgment, everyone at the great white throne judgment is an unbeliever. Yes, sir. All right? That's an unbeliever who has already rejected Christ in their life, and so they're, they're, they're already doomed to the lake of fire. You know, as I would hear that as a child, you hear all these different judgments. This one is the one you don't want to be at. <laughs> Amen. Now, there is another one, and this one is not on your handout. It is called the judgment seat of Christ or the Bema seat of Christ. Anybody familiar with what that one is? The judgment seat of Christ or the Bema seat of Christ? Amen. That's where the church That's where church is judged according to our what? Word Lord. Works. Mm -hmm. and, and why we did what we did. Now, we won't go into this tonight, but write it down. Romans 14, 10 through 12. Romans 14, 10 through 12. And it says that some folks' works will be like gold, silver, and precious stones. That means when their works are tried, they will stand up to what Christ has in mind. But then it says some folks' works, after they were saved, not your salvation, but your works will be like wood, hay, and stubble. So again, why are we motivated and what motivates us to do what we do as believers? <laughs> Yeah. So you will be rewarded for your works after you are saved. Amen? Amen. This is not a reward for your salvation. You're saved, praise God. But God is going to judge every believer for everything they did after they were saved. Amen. That's when it gets real quiet again. <laughs> Why'd you sing in the choir? Why'd you preach? Why did you deek? Why did you hush? Amen. Whatever you did, why did you, whatever you did as a Christian, what was your motivation? Will it hold up under the fiery gaze of our Savior? That's the question. The beam of seed. Amen. So, that being said, at the end of all this, praise the Lord, Revelation 20, there's a new heaven and a new earth. We, we looked at this in depth a, a while back. I, I couldn't imagine it. I couldn't wrap my head around it. But God is going to make everything new. A new heaven and a new earth. A new Jerusalem. All I can say is this. This will sum this part up. Eyes have not seen. All right. Neither ears heard nor has it entered into the heart of man what the Lord has prepared 
for his children, for those who love him. Amen? Amen. Amen? So, when we say this, Jesus is coming, it's not just a catchphrase. It's the truth. Turn to Revelation 22. Jesus says something once, you need to mark it down. He says something twice, it is extremely important. He says it three times, it's a warning. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 7, Revelation 22. Mm -hmm. He says what? Behold, I come quickly. Look at verse 12. And behold, I come, hallelujah, quickly. Look at verse 20. Surely I come quickly. In fact, the last thing Jesus says is I am coming quickly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, letter O, don't be distracted with predicting dates and theories and all these things. Yes, we're anxious that the Lord is coming, but we have an assignment, church. What is our assignment again? Acts 1-8. You shall be my witnesses. You shall be my witnesses. Amen? I, I know, again, all these recent events and speculation. I don't know when the Lord's coming, but I know he's coming. He said he's coming quickly. So where does that leave me? What do I need to be doing? Since I don't know the day nor the hour, I just need to be about, like Jesus said, be about the Father's business. Amen. And that would line us up with Matthew 28, 19 and 20. And you all know what that is. That is the Great Commission. Now, that is the overview tonight, and we went through everything. I didn't know if we were going to get through it, but that's a lot to digest. But here's the important part you need to know. Have a biblical worldview because Jesus is coming. Amen. Every person will get to heaven but everybody will not stay there. Everybody one day will be a believer, but some will be a believer and be sad as they are told to depart. I never knew. So the question again is this. Are you a believer now? That's why the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Amen. And it's important to know, I know this maybe is for no one here that's watching tonight, but it's important to know that you need to be mindful of your own soul salvation. Amen. 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 You need to examine yourself daily and make sure that the Lord is working in your life, He's working in your heart, and that He, whatever assignment He has for you, you are doing. These classes have been wonderful, but what do I often hear Reverend Armstrong say this, what do we do with it? Other than to say, man, we had a wonderful teaching uh, 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 time, we had a wonderful learning time, what will we do with this information tonight? Amen. There's some emails that need to go out, there's some texts that need to go out, there's some Facebook posts that need to be made. There are some people in the store that need to be talked to and simply we need to tell them behold Jesus is coming quickly. Are you ready? Are you ready? Amen. Amen. Really fast this book again I, I, it is a great study. Um, it has everything in it tonight plus much more and all those things that uh, Minister Smith were asked about pre, uh, pre terrorist view and all those different ones. It's called Things to Come. Reverend Freeman gave this to me. Thank you, Reverend Freeman. And it's by J. Dwight Pentecost. And then also, Minister Smith gave several of us this book. It's a wonderful book by John Walbert. I've just read just the first little bit beginning, but the rapture question. So what questions people have about the rapture? There are plenty of other wonderful books, but uh, I would encourage you first to go back over each thing and look at what was said on each of the days. Days 302 through day, I think it said 313 or 315. Amen? Questions or comments? Really fast. I was wanting to comment that a lot of people get hung up on the last day and that Jesus is going to come on the last day. But if you look at, if you look at Christ's first coming, yeah. he resurrected from the dead. He didn't, he didn't actually leave me until after 40 days. So he made many appearances.
to his church, not unbelievers, the church. Uh, so, you know, this is that was we reverse that for when he comes back, he comes back for his church before he comes and says, Put on Mount all of them. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, you know, so, that book by Dr. Pentecost. Yes. Uh, several years old. Mm -hmm. And in that, he tries to explain why the United States of America is not mentioned in Revelation. Yeah. And his explanation again was that uh, there will be so many taken out of the United States at the rapture that we won't count. Interesting. But, and that's not true today. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 If you missed that online, he said this book, the, the Dwight Pentecost tries to explain why the U.S. is not mentioned in end time. He said there'd be so many taken out, but that's maybe not the truth today with, with how many have departed from the faith. Um, I, I'm interested to know. One of these days we'll know. I, I've often asked this question. Second coming of Christ, the Bible says that we are riding with him. Yes. Anybody ridden a white horse? <laughs> Ride a white horse, Amen. We're gonna be, we're gonna have front row seat for whatever the Lord's gonna do, and we're gonna be in the air on a horse. Now, Deacon Hugh, we're gonna catch up with you that day, brother. We're gonna be higher than what you went. We're gonna be with the Lord, and He's gonna come in on a white horse, and we're gonna be riding along with Him, brother. I, I'm not planning on doing any skydiving. I'm just gonna sit there and watch. Wow. Consider consider what's going to happen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Also, Pastor, on the uh, great white throne of judgment. Uh -huh. Not only are unbelievers going to be judged, but Satan's going to be his father. Yes, yes. And fallen angels. Yes, Satan and his angels. And the Bible says they will be cast into death, hell, and the grave. And, and Satan and all will be cast into the lake of fire. I often wonder how is a lake bigger than hell? Mm -hmm. And where is it at? Yeah. I don't know. God knows. Mm -hmm. And they're going, he's going all that's going to be cast into there. Has y'all been prepared yet? That's a good question, but I don't know. <laughs> I would say so. Do you believe so? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because remember the first two go in there is a false prophet in the Antichrist. Yes. 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 Yeah. There was a lot we didn't cover tonight, especially the, the, like the two witnesses that will, yeah. will sit up and after three days being dead in the street. Y'all take time and, and, look, and look at it. It's, it's a lot. We just did a brief overview tonight. So God bless you. Very Thank good. you for it. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma Lucifer, Satan, Beelzebub, Antichrist, are they all the same? The Antichrist will be a man energized by the power of Satan. Now, the dragon, I think they call it, I think this name, Abaddon, it's a, Apollyon, yeah. Beelzebub, Be Belial, which is a, a, the New Testament for Baal, mm -hmm. all that, those are considered Satan, Satan. his name. He has names too. Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was his name in heaven before he fell, but also the same now. So yeah. And, and when you see the dragon in Revelation, that's Satan. <coughs> Yes. Any of those on the scene now? Satan's on the scene. Yeah, he's, he's on the scene. Exactly. He's on the scene. Now, the Antichrist, that's kind of, and, and the false prophet, I, I'm not, <laughs> have you heard a lot of people view? believe they are. Have you heard the view that uh, the Antichrist will be uh, Judas reincarnated? Simply because the scripture says when he died, he went to his own place. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I've not heard that. I've not heard that. I've often wondered where his own place was, though. Interesting. <laughs> yes. Anybody else? It's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, the Lake of Fire. Yes, sir. Lake of Fire. Yep. Yeah. Some people believe that that's just going to be the end and, and be annihilated. Mm -hmm. What do you think? see what Jesus said. He said, fear him that not only after he killed he cast you into hell. Well, and he plucked your eye out. Plucked your... I, 
operate? Don't, won't they be in eternal torment forever? Well, yes, but he said the worm will not die. The fire will not be placed. Yeah. That's because the soul will never die. Yes. Yeah. So they will be in eternal torment forever. Falling in darkness and burning. Yeah. Just like heaven's forever, hell. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. You just don't go there and you're done and then you get to, you're just in oblivion. No, you will be conscious. I think that was Jesus' reason for sharing the story of rich man and, and Lazarus. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. The man, rich man was conscious of his plight and his situation. Yeah. Yeah. Now how's that fair? This little short time you live on earth and you can do one sin and go to hell. Uh, Versus, what, what makes it? How's that fair? Well, that, yeah. That's a great question. That's a great question. Here's the deal. The sin is rejecting Jesus Christ as Savior. Mm -hmm. That is what sends people to hell. And what about people in the Old Testament? What about them? Well, they, they, didn't they, were, they, 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 yeah, but they were, they were in the, uh, I guess, the Hades, mm -hmm. so to speak. So yep. the, saints the saints were, and then he emptied that out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, it's kind of like uh, we do, a crime, say, trespassing on the government ground, they could shoot you for that. It, you know, it's more like who do. you sin against. You know, mm -hmm. when, you know when even David, when he sinned against uh, and killed Uriah, he's, when he prayed to God, he says, against thee and thee only have I sinned. So, you know, we sin against an infinite God, and that can never be paid for without infinite blood, which is Christ. And if Amen. we don't have that, then we just pay forever and never get paid up. Yeah. Well, again, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You can't build something to get you to heaven. You have to depend on Jesus Christ. Amen. Now. Uh, Jesus, when he died and emptied those, uh, emptied that part of that compartment of hell out, he covered the back end too. Yes, indeed. And I believe those who sinned in the, in the Old Testament, they were held to the same mm -hmm. condemnation. Mm -hmm. So they were saved because they looked forward to Calvary. They yes. Knew all about it, yes. But that's what they looked for. Genesis 3 15. Yes. And even Hebrews points to, to yeah, the, the righteous dead. Yeah. Great questions. Brother, we won't keep you standing. God bless you. Oh, that's all right. I've been standing on my feet all night. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is, what, Holy Week? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we've been in the Lord's study all week long. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed from what I've heard this week. And it's not much. Mm -hmm. But this here is for you. Reverend Scott. Thank you. Reverend Griffin. Thank you. And the rest of Providence couldn't see what we did here Amen. without Sabrina. Amen. Let's give Sister Amen. Sabrina. Amen. At our church, we call her Glue. <laughs> <laughs> we have an office called Glue. You know, you got, you got. Secretary, you got treasure, then you got glue. Yeah. And she's she's whatever you need, she is able to do it. So we praise God for her. And I thank God for uh, Reverend Griffin opening his doors. Thank God for those of you online. Praise the Lord. We pray if we don't see you tomorrow evening for uh, 7 o'clock for Good Friday service at Pink Creek. We pray you have a wonderful Easter and that you celebrate um, Jesus Christ. Tomorrow evening at 7 at Paint Creek, Reverend Gene Armstrong will be our guest preacher. And uh, I know he has a word that's burning on his heart. So come out and, and thank God for Good Friday. Amen. If you go out on Black Friday in, in, in November, you can certainly come out on Good Friday. Amen. So come out on Good Friday in, in March. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll let uh, Reverend Griffin close us out this evening. God so bless you. Thank you once again, Pastor Scott, for your great teaching. Let us all bow and word of prayer as we thank the Lord. Most gracious and Father, we 
come once again to say thank you for our teaching this week and how you continue to bless us, dear Heavenly Father. And we know that uh, Friday is coming, but we also have a Sunday, dear Heavenly Father, of your arising, your resurrection. Thank you once again for those who come to hear your word and give us safe travel back to our respective homes, dear Lord. And as we celebrate and, uh, on this good Friday, dear Heavenly Father, and worship, and that we come Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday, dear Lord, <coughs> with a praise in our hearts and uh, glorifying you once again for what you have done on Calvary's cross that no man could ever do. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.